Hey guys, Major Dodo here, and today we'll be doing part 5 of the Pinups of Death assembly series. So today's miniature is the Twilight Pinup Knight, or the Twilight Knight Pinup. Not to be confused with the Order Knight Pinup, two different models, and I have confused those two myself since they are, it, they're both Twilight Knights, they're both pinups of Twilight Knights, but yeah, they got different names. It's more so important when you, uh, well, obviously you got to refer to different models. Um, I know when I was selling the Order Knight pinup when I painted her, I uh, actually got corrected because I'd list her as a Twilight Knight pinup. Just yeah, semantics, I guess. Most of the event promos, so like the Halloween promo and the yeah, Easter promo, Christmas promo, these are all also Twilight Nights, just to make it more confusing. The distinction being that, yeah, well, I don't know really. This, I guess this is just the original Twilight Night pinup, in a sense. So I'm just beginning with cutting out all the parts. This is a very simple kit. There are no options. There's very little assembly. The only sub-assembly I will recommend is that you leave the cloak off. Uh, so this, as always, this is my first time assembling this model. I have scoped it out a bit on the sprue. However, I will um, yeah, mention I did do the normal Twilight Knight miniature, Alice and the Twilight Knight, and it's a very similar assembly as basically all the core parts are the same. It's just she's got less clothes on. Alrighty, so... I've cut all our pieces out. We're going to get the trusty scalpel blade knife, which I uh, actually cut myself on last night doing some work. And we're going to begin by cleaning up all those edges where we just cut off. It's one of my pet hates, especially after uh, last night's projects I was working on. The um, people that don't remove the mold lines on miniatures. I'm sorry, there's just no excuse. No matter how lazy you are, takes not a lot of time and it is a massive difference in the quality of your miniatures when they're finished. I might bring the camera up a smidgen. There we go. Just get the, um, especially with smooth areas like cloaks and stuff, it makes a hell of a lot of difference. Go get rid of all the mold lines check along the base of the cloak there's a thin mold line this is actually quite a thick piece of plastic the um the last one the normal twilight night the cloak is a lot thinner no idea why just something i noticed one of my uh inane observations all right so this cloak done now we need to do the feet It's always important to get the feet nice and smooth as that's where your miniature is going to be joining. Especially when you've got a new blade as well, as I've mentioned before, try and avoid working with the tip like that because that's what's going to jump up and cut you. And that's also, that's exactly what happened last night. I was working, um, trying to clean a, an awkward piece where the miniature had already been assembled by someone. Uh, without cleaning all the cut marks and stuff, and so a lot of the, the pieces that I was trying to clean were in awkward areas. And, uh, yep, that's what happens. The tip jumps up and gets you. I even considered wearing a thimble at one point, just when I changed blades, but this is the first time I've um, done this in quite a while. Alright, so we want to look at this. Alright, so there's a piece at the end of this for her bracer. I'll bring it up to the camera. It's very small. So you can see that the bracer goes to where my fingernail is. So that's the area on the end that we need to smooth off. I'm just pointing this out because this can look like extra stuff to cut off, but no. You want to leave that there. You just want to smooth off this top bit here. Very carefully, you know, as with all these parts, they can be quite fiddly. 
All right. The other, I guess the bonus of having very small pieces is that they do tend to have few, if any, mold lines. All right, go for the breasts. There's a very small one right here. Which I'm gonna get at it from both sides, just to make sure. But you don't want to trim too much off or it's going to look weird. It's actually the base, so I'm holding them upside down. That's cool. Um, that's parts done. But yes, detachable breasts again. I don't think there's actually a model in the box that doesn't have detachable breasts. I could be wrong, I but from memory when I went through, it was pretty much everything. Um... Pretty sure even the savior pinup, and that's like a lolly, so it's got very small breasts. They still made those detachable. Now there is a small mold line going down the side of her thigh here, I'm gonna smooth. And yeah, it's a thought, so there's going to be a mold line going from the top of her shoulders, where I'm just scraping here, all the way down. Now some of this will get hidden by the cloak in the end, but just to be safe, you want to get all of that. It's very carefully working the way down. Usually very small bits of plastic, you can even scrape them off with a finger now. So... Alright, I want to get in between the straps again. She's got a little G on. Just a little G. I think the other one did as well, I can't remember. Which is going to be a fun, very small line to try and paint. Um, check the thigh again. <clears throat> All right, so that piece is done. Now, finally, and we've got the headpiece. Now, this is going to be left off as a sub assembly, um, just because when I looked at it, and I'm pretty sure it's the exact same as the. Um, the normal version of this miniature, the cloak will hide access to a lot of the back area, and you know, you can see some of that. So, obviously, if you're wondering before you do it, just dry fit and see how much you're going to see. How much you know, it's for some people, it might not be worth it, but for most people, I feel you're gonna want to make sure that everywhere you can see. Uh, has got paint. So you can see up behind from around the side here up into the arch of her back. Now if you put all that on it's going to be very awkward to get there with a brush especially once you've um, attached the arms and such. Alright so we have one more leg to do and the sword and then we can get to, our, get to the nitty gritty of actually putting it together. That's it. Now when I paint her, I think I'm going to paint her in very much box art style, just the very simple one. I've done a few different versions. I've done one with a green cloak. I've done one with a black cloak with blue edging. Um, I think I went with green with a green edging cloak, black cloak for Allison. Um, but obviously there is a bit of flexibility there. Alrighty, so I'm going to grab out a base, as usual. I'm going to leave the halves of the base separate. Now this is a personal preference, but I just find it's easier. So normal Kingdom Death bases, two halves. For painting, I leave the insert out, like this. 
because some people, you know, if you want to paint this symbol, it's easier if it's on its own, or if you just want to spray, spray paint it black. It's what I've done with a few of them. It's much easier to do that when it's separate than trying to brush paint it all. And it's it's not rocket science. Part A, part B, glue it together. I don't feel it's something that really needs to be going into in depth. But you do want to quickly go around the edges of the base and just clean up where they've come off the sprue. Now they don't generally come on a sprue, but you know, like all plastic things, at some point they're attached to one. Alrighty. So we will start with the breasts. Why not? Start with the fun bags. We're going to be using the super thin glue. Doing a thin run up underneath. Hands are a little shaky tonight, but not too bad. It's more that this piece is very small and fiddly. Alright. Now, the V for the breasts goes to the top. It's pretty easy to see, except for when I drop it. I'm just going to sit them together and press it in tight. Now there's going to be a little bit of an overlap because these are supposed to look almost like Princess Leia bikini. Bikini top, just the, the bronze shells. I'll bring it in close so you can see though. That's it. it um, this is actually a good one. It's of hiding all the areas where it's joined because you've got the area that's actually being attached is recessed below. It's one of the things I like. It's, I find um, intelligent model designers will usually try and have as many of their joins as they can. I like that. Okay, so it looks like that's the right leg. Uh, the legs, they look pretty similar. Basically dry fitting is going to be your best way to tell the difference. Um, I do think it looks like the one on the left seems to have more of an uh, bend, he says. Yes. But as I've said, as I say a million times, if you're not sure, dry fit, then dry fit again, and then dry fit again. All right, so. Just going to use this glue again. Just hit the top. Attach. Press tight. Now there's a small gap around it I'm seeing. Even when it's pushed tight, which will want to run a small line of green stuff in, I think. Or apply more glue. I think I might just apply a little bit more glue. And that'll pull up a bit and seal that. And then if it's still showing the gap when you go to prime, then we go and um, the good green stuff it. Alrighty, so now we're going to do the same to the other leg. Just apply some glue to that surface, and we'll do some to both, since it looks like they're going to be... Uh, prone to having that little gap, so we'll just do a little bit to both, but not too much. If you do have excess pull up, just grab a tissue and use that to absorb it. Especially if you're using the super thin, it will um, usually just get soaked up straight away. Alright, so there she's going. Bit of an odd pose, with the leg, one leg forward and to the side. Here's one of my pet hates with these models. They do tend to stand very um, awkwardly, very unnaturally. Like, I guess I know they're pinups, but there's there's pinups and then there's holy Jesus. Why would she ever stand like that? All right, so dry fitting again. Left arm, yeah, that's what I thought. So that, well, no, it's left arm. Left arm when you're looking at her like this, right arm on the actual, from model's perspective. So we're going to dry fit that, 
Um, yep. So again, just a little bit of plastic glue thin on the join. And I'm going to apply a little bit to the other side. So normally this is how they recommend you do it. I generally, you can get away with just putting it on one side. But if it's a piece where it's going to have, um, like the piece is going to be hanging off it or something, and it's going to be awkward, if you apply it to both sides, that starts the chemical reaction and it bonds a little bit faster. I, I usually find I still have problems though, even when I do do it that way. So that looks pretty good. Just making sure it lines up. So that's the hand that's going to grip the sword. And then we just have the armor arm. As I said, it's a very simple model. Um, if you're new, maybe one of the good ones to start at. Um, of course, if you've been working through as I've gone, then uh, might be a bit late. But you never know. Alright, so it looks like there's a little bit of an overlap, but that's not when you see it. Um, I'll bring the camera in actually. Why not? I'll bring the model in, not the camera. Uh, <clears throat> it's actually the bracelet. She has an armlet, which is the join, which covers the join. You can see there. So that's all right. It just it just looks like jewelry. That's that's the point. That's again probably one of the more intelligently designed models in the box. Um, and Kingdom Death in general. Hiding joins like that. Because it reduces the amount of work the modeler has to then do. And that's probably one of the downsides of the range in general that a lot of people have. Is that they feel they have to put a lot more work in than they normally would. Alrighty, so now we're going to carefully line this up. It does sit fairly close almost resting on her thigh. So I just want to get it in and make sure everything is tight, as tight as possible. However, I think it's going to get covered. The join itself will probably get mostly covered by the cloak. All right. So if we stick carefully dry fit over, you're going to hide all of that anyway, at least from the back. And so the last two pieces is the sword and the head, and well, last three pieces, of course, but the sword's the last main piece that we won't be sub-assembling. Then the cloak we will leave off. All right, so we're going to carefully dry fit, get the all thing around. All right, I may, hmm, I think I may actually glue this to the base first. And I'll do that with the white, as usual, just because that gives a quicker bond. It's a stronger gel bond at the start. And that's because um, uh, it'll be easy to make sure the sword is sitting how I want it to sit. Now, I've bumped this arm before it was fully dry. All right. Go along the bottoms of the feet. Position it in the middle. You can leave the sword off altogether if you want. I know for some people that's probably what they're going to think of doing, just because it makes access a little bit easier. All right, let's look. Is she sitting, standing straight? So it looks like the the way the pose is. bit weird. So she's kind of centered in the base at the moment, but nothing looks centered. Looking at the top, her shoulders are squared in, but the her leg kind of comes back in. It's very weird. Um, <clears throat> so otherwise, uh, I guess worth mentioning, since I will leave the cloak off, there is a slot at the back that the peg for the helmet, uh, for the hood, matches with. So that will get glued when we do the helmet when we attach the hood. 
But as I said, generally a good idea to just keep that off until you finish painting as it will make your life a lot easier. And you can do different techniques on this than you would on there. You know, you could spray paint this white and glaze it if you wanted to. Um, or just spray paint it black and do some quick highlights depending on what you want to do. Uh, personally, I'm not sure. I think I may even prime this black. But I'd want to prime, I think though you'd want to prime both parts the same colour so that you get the same tone all the way through, but personal preference. All right, so now the base should be just dry enough that we can carefully handle it, not rough handle it. Um, I'm just going to apply that little bit on there. I'm going to get the join on the sword hand just a little bit. Now we're going to careful, and it says this is where you want to be very careful as to how you're gripping it, not just to get a secure grip, but also to let go of it. Let's, let's see. All right. Very carefully. Sit down. All right. It looks like that is flush. So as I said, the cloak I'll just sit on for now so you can see. Goes on like that. And then you match this peg up. Um, you may need to trim it for an easier fit, but that's just... As I said, it sits like that. Um, not very hard. Very simple model. We may end up rearranging the series, I don't know. I feel maybe we should start with the simple models for the overall. Definitely let me know your input, um, as always. But thank you for watching, and that covers the assembly of the Twilight Knight. Make sure to keep tuned, as we will be going back through and painting each model in the series, including this piece. Uh, don't forget to check out uh, the next part, which will be part six, and I believe I've chosen the pinup survivor uh, for something doing. That's gonna, it's a little bit more complicated, but another nice model that I'm looking forward to doing. Thank you for watching. Do check out the Patreon and the Dodo Paints Facebook if you haven't already, and you can also watch me stream painting live on Twitch. Bit of an outro spiel. I should probably be doing in each episode. Um, if you've watched the others, you'll know I'll probably be going back to redo audio. So maybe we'll go back and we'll make it a bit more cohesive. As I said before, though, that means this is the time to get your feedback in, get your input in. Is there anything you want me to talk about during these videos? Let me know. All right. Thank you for watching. And I'm Dodo.